today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Will you please marry me? You pick up and sleep with 70 to 80 women a year? You're such a sweetheart. He's handsome. When you're not sleeping with a lady, where do you sleep? On the sidewalk. And homeless. You sleep on a cardboard box on the street. There's no shame in my game, Dr. Phil. An internet sensation. You've been to rehab four times. I can do whatever I want as long as I got clean. But you've been clean four times and you blew it. A cardboard Casanova. You victimize everybody you're around, right? I don't like to think that. With a dark side. You said you're drunk 100% of the time. Are you drunk now? I just drank like 10 beers before I came on here. You wake up shaking, right? I'm still kind of shaking right now. What are you running from? Reality. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by, Dr. Phil. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. In five, four. I am not giving up on you. take a look at this young man. His name is Joe. He's 26 years old, handsome, nicely dressed. Just by looking at him, you probably wouldn't have a problem with your daughter dating him, right? You can, she can bring him home. I mean, what could possibly be wrong with him? Well, let me show you. That's right, Joe is homeless. He lives in New York City and sleeps on a cardboard box on the sidewalk. Now, Joe recently became an Internet sensation after a video of him was shot by Elite Daily and was released. Now, in it, Joe brags that despite occasionally bedding down on the pavement, he does homelessness differently because he looks good and he stays clean. But that's not all. What shocked people the most was Joe's revelation that three or four nights a week he finds shelter and a warm bed by picking up women and spending the night with them. Just for general recreation purposes. I love you. You're f killing it. <laughs> yes. What usually like dictates how long like a girl lets you bunk up in her place? It's pretty much all depends on how good it is. I was sleeping at this broad's house and last night we just ate a load of clothes and drinking. When you're not sleeping with a lady though, where do you sleep? On the sidewalk, on cardboard, cardboard all-star. I do homelessness differently, you know what I'm saying? I might sleep on cardboard like two or three nights a week, but I literally wake up every single day and do whatever I want. How many outfits do you have? How many ensembles? I have four pretty good outfits. Four pretty good outfits? How many, like, bad outfits do you have? I have no bad outfits. I don't even like to consider myself a bum. What do you consider yourself? A gypsy. I try and maintain as much humanity as I can. This situation, you know? Have a great night. God bless you. That was me donating money to somebody to go get a hot dog. If you're a type of person who inspires compassion, then people are going to give you money. The reason why people give me the amount of money they do is because they realize that they're just that close to becoming homeless, you know what I'm saying? How can you be homeless and not do drugs and drink? Like, I feel like the misery would just overwhelm you. This abstract lifestyle is not for everybody. I'm the only one that can really pull this off. Well, almost 5 million people have watched that video. Everyone has been buzzing about this cardboard Casanova, and no one could believe his story. Well, neither could we. We had to meet Homeless Joe. First, we had to track him down. Then Joe told us he didn't have an ID to get on a plane to come to the show. But he said he'd hop in a car with his buddy, and they drove almost 3,000 miles from New York City to Los Angeles to come here to meet me. Now, within hours of arriving in L.A., Joe was doing what he says he does best, drinking and wooing the ladies. So we captured this smooth operator in action ourselves. Take a look. Yeah, so I'm finally in Los Angeles. It's crazy. I've never been here before. I've never seen the Pacific Ocean or experienced anything like this. How long was it? Um, it's like a surprise three days. You can drop me off in the middle of the desert with nothing, no money, no like no clothes except for the shirt on my back and, and I will survive. Will you please marry me? <laughs> I'm sorry. You're a nice person to talk to. I'm a role model. So what do you do for work? 
Probably 90% of the girls I hook up with know I'm homeless. Where is your base? Like, what? I don't have one. What's your P.O. box or your, like, address? I don't have one. Sorry, is that a deal breaker? It's in our genetic makeup to want to, like, hook up. You just, like, tell them whatever they want to hear, dude. Like, it's easy. You just bat your eyelashes, yeah. Because you're f***ing Oh, that's so nice. What do you use? Do you Secret little old fight? It is absolutely nothing. That's just. It's like no natural. I probably only sleep with like 70 or 80 girls every year. There's 52 weeks in here, think about it. Anybody can do it. Like, anybody. It's very nice to meet you. You're such a sweetheart. If you gave me another hour, I'd have her in the bedroom. <laughs> so, what, what do you. You're watching yourself on video there. What do you think? I think it's hysterical. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> that movie's amazing. Like, the way they shot everything, like, it's awesome. Yeah? So, uh, did I hear you say that you pick up and sleep with seven to 80 women a year? Yeah, it's not really that much, dude. Think about it. There's 52 weeks in a year, so that's barely over one per week. Like, like, yeah, I mean, hell, it's almost, can do it. like, that's almost you know nothing. Saying, like, I mean, it, it really isn't that impressive. Like, yeah. I can't believe I'm on TV for doing it. You, know? <laughs> you say the rest of the time you sleep on a cardboard box on the street. Yeah. And, but you say you only sleep on clean cardboard. You won't. Oh, I, I don't, I don't, that, that, there's actually no cardboard in that picture right there. I see that. You, you yeah. know what's funny about that photo right there? Nothing. Nothing but is funny. Go ahead. Absolutely. Nothing is funny about that. I it was actually overdosed the day before. I got released from the Beth Israel while I was still blacked out. And Elite Daily, I never even gave them permission to shoot that shot, but they were walking by and saw me because it was like in their general vicinity and photographed that. Yeah. <laughs> you say girls will actually walk up and see you on the street and just assume you passed out, not that you were living there. Yeah. Like if I'm wearing like a polo shirt or like a Ralph Lauren shirt or something like that, you know, and they're just like, you drank too much, like you passed out, like what are you doing? I'm like, I live here. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah, like I live on the cardboard, like, and they, they don't believe it most of the time. Okay, so you, you try to look presentable, and, and so you see like, like four good outfits. Th this, is your, this is your bag of clothes? Oh, set outfits. So you have pretty good looking stuff, you say? Yeah, I like to think so. Yeah, okay. And you keep this in a, with you all the time? Generally, yeah. And as far as toiletries and that sort of thing, y y where do you get that stuff? Um, generally the store, you know. But if I'm in a situation where, like, I don't have anything, like, I'll make it happen and I'll just go, I'll, like, walk into CVS or, like, Walgreens or something and literally, like, use whatever I need and then just dip out, like. So you don't steal it from the store and leave. You just use it there. I just use it, and then I walk out. Like, if they say something, they say something. Like, what are they going to do? <laughs> like, just open it up and... Absolutely. Fix, uh, yeah. There's no shame in my game, Dr. Phil. No, it, does anybody say anything <laughs> to you? Um, occasionally. There was one time, there was this Dwayne Reed on, like, 3rd Ave in New York City, and I walk in, and I, like, spray the, like, axe on me or whatever. This is actually pretty funny. So, and then I walk it out, and the manager comes and chases me down. He's like... What'd you just do? I'm like, I walked in and I sprayed down some, like, axes. He's like, did you take anything? I'm like, dude, like, you can't even approach me. I'm outside the store, so it's illegal for you to even say anything. So he's like, can I look in your bag? I'm like, absolutely not, bro. See you later. How much money do you make panhandling? Um, it's inconsistent, but... I don't know, the most I ever made was like close to 300 in a day, and the worst I ever, like, I always make at least like 100 bucks, usually. Yeah, you said your average is like 150 bucks? Yeah, and within a couple hours. Within a couple of hours? Yeah. Wow. Well, because like, look... if you're going to be homeless, right, you know, and you're going to live outside, like the way I look at it, right? I don't really feel bad because if I'm sleeping on the sidewalk, why should I feel bad about holding a sign? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I, I, I looked to see what the median income was for people in America. In 2013, it's the median individual income was $41,319. Yeah. And you 
on the other hand, from panhandling, <laughs> you're making 150 a day is $54,750 a year tax-free. So you're in the top half of the United States. I'm sure that's not the case because I wouldn't be living on the sidewalk if I was making that much money. Well, you, you said 150 well, a day. Well, also New York is much more expensive to live in than any other place in the country. Their sidewalks are more expensive than... <laughs> their sidewalks are so much more expensive. In Omaha? so much more expensive. Yes, if I, if I were to go to Denver or somewhere like that, yeah. So, but, well, for somebody to make 54750 they would have to make 75000 a year before taxes probably. So you're actually, you actually have some money going through your hands. Yeah, but I'm a train wreck, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we're going to find out where all that money is going. Next, how did a good-looking, charming, promising student from a good family end up sleeping on the streets of Manhattan? What went wrong? We're going to find out when we come back. I do not like consider sleeping on the sidewalk acceptable. People think I'm being a Given the choice between sleeping on a cardboard box or sleeping on a bed, I'm pretty sure any human being in the world would much rather sleep in a bed. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. She's 15 and out of control. My daughter is drinking and using drugs. Is that because stepdad? You said you don't like her. Dad? I've never seen her drink in my house. Didn't you give her a breathalyzer at his house? And mom? She tried to bribe me. She said, what is it going to take for you to do the show? Are so clueless? I can't blame him for not liking her. There just is a time to tell you what's wrong with what you just said. Then on Thursday, she stormed off the stage. But five minutes later... Would you like to come back out? What kind of show would it be without me? Oh, we'd limp along somehow. My responsibility is to try and not look homeless. I go to CVS and I take their hair gel. Now they have mirrors near the makeup yeah. section. I fix my hair. I grab a Red Bull and I walk out. Well, today we're talking to, frankly, an Internet sensation. He's known on the Internet as Homeless Joe. That was Joe using a drugstore like he's right at home in his own bathroom. Uh, Joe says there's no shame in his game. Hell, he just does what it takes to get by. Uh, he says that he survives living on the mean streets of Manhattan by panhandling during the day and then picking up women at night using his good looks and his charm. He says that by showering at women's homes and freshening up at the drugstore, uh, he manages to not look the part. You're, one of your big tools is you don't look homeless, right? I, t I mean, there's some mornings I guarantee I look homeless, you know? Like, but most of the time, no, I yeah, well, never Well, some mornings homeless. I wake up and look homeless, but... <laughs> I highly doubt that. <laughs> no, you'd be surprised how worthless I can get. Uh, That's true. Give a few days off, I'd be right there with you. Uh, oh, God. So, now, all right, you, you went to school, right? Yeah. And, in fact, you took advanced placement courses. You took AP yeah, courses. Absolutely. In, like, math and chemistry, but you didn't graduate. No, did not graduate. Why? Because I got kicked out a month before graduation because of a marijuana-related incident. Okay, but you got your GED. Yeah. And then you, you went to college. I tried going to college for a little bit. Like, and then what messed that up? Well, I was in the middle of a huge ecstasy run at the time, so I stayed up for like three weeks when that was going on. And like, I was still getting really, really good grades, but I was a train wreck, like absolute catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been in jail. Unfortunately. You, you, got, you were on the street sleeping, right? Yeah, the, like I want to say September 2013, I got woken up by these cops. I took a bunch of Xanax and I blacked out and I passed out underneath the bench. Like, I was so messed up, I wasn't even on top of the bench. I was underneath the bench, you know? So the cops like, woke so the you cops, up, the cops so you come decided to, me to up punch them in the face? Well, no, I didn't know that they were cops. I thought that they were just trying to steal my stuff. And I was... <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, you so, said they wanted your sack of yeah, so four I good that, outfits. Well, no, actually, at this point, I had probably had about seven good outfits, Dr. Oh. Phil. Yeah, it deteriorated from that over the course of about a year and a half, you know. So you came out swinging. Well, yeah, but then once I figured out that they were cops, I stopped swinging. <laughs> and they kept swinging, you yeah. see? <laughs> yeah, but you hit a cop, you're going in. And oh, yeah, I went in. So you went in for I like six in. months. Yeah. Then you had another incident with the cops. Before? 
Did, did, is yeah, this... I've, had, I've had a lot of incidents with cops. <laughs> Unfortunately. How many times have you been to jail for hitting a cop? Because <laughs> I got the second time you were arrested yeah, for swinging at a cop. Tw twice. Twice. Yeah. I got a bunch of those on my record, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not something I'm proud of, you know. Why did your parents kick you out? Um, which time? <laughs> the last time. The last time, um, my mom found a bunch of drugs, and I think, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, yeah. How long have you been living on the street? Well, the first time I ever became, like, legitimately homeless, like, living on the street, was August of 2013, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the first time I was ever, like, I've been kicked out of my house multiple times before that happened, but the first time I ever actually lived on the street was August of 2013. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much did the exact same thing in Boston until I got locked up in December that I was doing in New York, you know, just like surviving. You seem to be happy to be homeless. Sometimes, yeah. Just not in the morning. Yeah, why not in the morning? Because I feel like garbage. Absolute garbage. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, you kind of hang around outside of bars at night, right? No, I go in bars. So. Oh, you go in? Yeah. And you actually buy a few drinks? I always have money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the girls that you go, you'll actually go in, buy a few drinks, chat some girls up. And how do you... How, I, I've been married for 38 years, okay? I haven't been on a date with anybody other than my wife in 38 years, and we were together years before that, so Such I'm kind of old at this. What? Such a long time. It is a long time. <laughs> uh, well, it doesn't feel all, like a long time to me. Good evening. Uh, um, well, I'm happy what, what do you about say it. to them? What, what do you say to them to make the transition from the bar to the house? Dude, I, I just go wherever God takes me, you know? Like, I don't really, like, say anything particular. Like, I just... Pretty sure to, God's like, not part of this transaction right here. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. No, like, I, I, I don't really, like, put that much effort towards it, you know? They just kind of apparently crawl in your lap. Oh, um, well, no, dude. It's like riding a bike. Like, it's not difficult once you know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. So, when you, when you do this, do you tell them you're homeless? Predominantly, yeah. So you'll say, yeah, I'm... Yeah, and it's generally not an issue. But do they ask for your, where you live? Yeah, like, I tell them straight up, like, I live outside. Like, they're like, how the heck do you live outside? I'm like... So you're like, can I go home with you? Because, like, right now, I'm between boxes. I, <laughs> that's exactly what I say. Yeah? Exactly and what so I say. And so off you go. Specifically. And they... No, that's not what I say. And they, you <laughs> stay maybe two, three days sometimes? Yeah, if I'm lucky. You know. And then, you, and, but then you say you want, you're the one that wants to leave. Yeah, I can't really put up with one place for too long. Like I said in the interview, I'm a gypsy. Yeah. I like traveling. All right, well, Joe says that he drinks morning, noon, and night, sometimes up All to day. 30 vodka drinks a day. Now, I suspect that he's not exactly straight right now. Uh, <laughs> we're going to find out just how inebriated he is when we come back. I wake up vibrating every morning. It's a combination of drugs, the alcohol, but you're also... I have to get up as soon as I wake up. Or like, it doesn't work. Like, I'm not going to sit there and suffer through withdrawals all day. This November... A former UFC fighter arrested for allegedly beating his wife. He would have killed her that night if she hadn't left. Shut up. You're so annoying. This is the mother that's raising your children. Yeah, great for her. She's the one that took them from me. Is she beating the odds? I have 12 titles in weightlifting, and I have cancer. Or making stuff up. My mom never had cancer. You said that you lost 100 pounds in six days. You can't lose 100 pounds in six days unless they're cutting off body parts. Did their son's girlfriend kill him? You believe she knew he had overdosed and didn't tell you? Yes. Did you wait 45 minutes to get us to make sure that he was dead? No. You are lying. Tell the truth. You're psychotic. You need to be in a ward. 
My mom, she's an evil person. They say they are not allowed to visit their dying father. That is not true. If he wanted to see you, he'd call you. You are so hostile. Is mom keeping them from their dying dad? Do you want a relationship with your children? Of course. Are you okay with me calling them? Stop asking for permission to talk to them. This November on Dr. Phil. Dude, once I get drunk, I'll bounce her off. Like, right. anything can happen once that happens. Joe says he's kind of like a gypsy. I'm not sure gypsies would rush to claim him. But he says he loves the freedom of life on the street, but like many homeless people, uh, he battles with addiction. Uh, Joe says angels invented the combination of vodka mixed with Gatorade. They did. And after a few drinks being on the street, it's fun. Joe says if he stopped drinking, he could afford a home with the money he earns panhandling. Uh, but if you're, if you're picking up women, you... You go to nice homes, right? Some of these women live in nice apartments and nice homes, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you say it's easy. It's like riding a bike. It's not difficult at all. Yeah. Could you pick up somebody in this audience if, if you ran into them? Do you, do, you, do you believe you could pick up somebody in this audience? If they didn't know who I was, 100% fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, really wouldn't be an issue. You just start smoothing them. Just tell people what they want to hear, Dr. Pell. Really? I, I got to see this. I want to pick somebody in the audience. No, I'm not here. doing that. I got I to I I I see I'm your moves. I'm not doing that. You're, you're, you're afraid to do it? I'm not doing it. Why? Because I don't want to look like an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Too late for that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You, you, you would just smooth into them, though. You would just start talking to them. You would just... Yeah. For the most part, you know. Like, if I see something that, like, I don't know, like, catches my eye, like... But, dude, like, I'm not in a situation where I have to, like, find shelter tonight, so... Yeah. I don't really, I don't really care as you much. you got to be motivated. Well, motivation definitely helps, but... Yeah. You like, know. when you came out here, we put you in a hotel, right? You did. And how was that, sleeping in, like, a bed, it, not it, having to do anything? It was amazing. Yeah, it was good. It was very refreshing. What kind of shape's the minibar in? I destroyed the minibar. It's gone. It's gone, both of them. Yeah, they... <laughs> <sighs> we, we didn't think to bring, um... We, we didn't think to get that out uh, of your room. <laughs> You buy cheap vodka? Well, given the choice between getting, like, goose or, like, some garbage, you know, I'd obviously rather get some goose, but if I don't really have any other options, I'll take some abysmal vodka, you know? Because you're going to pour it into Gatorade, so... Yeah, once you mix vodka with Gatorade, like, it tastes yeah. like Gatorade. Do you, are you drunk now? I'm slightly intoxicated. I just drank enough so that my hand doesn't vibrate. It's still kind of shaking a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see how drunk you are right now. I'm not that drunk right now. I think you're pretty lucid right now. I'm definitely pretty lucid. Okay, I need you to I run this until it beeps twice. On. I'm sure you've done this before. Oh, I've done this many times before. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. Okay, all right, go. Keep going. Okay, all right. Now we'll count in and we'll see. What do you guess? If 0.08 is... 0.12. Oh, so you think you're over the legal limit. I think I'm 0 0.12. Wow, you're 0 0.05. So I'm not even drunk. You're falling... <laughs> well, wait, 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 this is a huge issue right now. <laughs> you're falling behind. No, I, 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 I just drank like 10 beers like, before I came on here, so... You drank 10 beers before you came on here? Well, I drank six before I even left the hotel room, and I drank a Four loco, which is the equivalent to five beers, so 11. Bigger my body processes, one an hour, but I go faster, so yeah, like 10. How long does it take you to drink a six-pack? Half an hour, 45 minutes. Well, so you'll put it right down? Oh, absolutely. Crush okay. it. You said you start drinking to not think about things, like what? Yeah, I don't like thinking about <laughs> Like what? I don't know, everything, life in general. Yeah. You've been to rehab four times. Yeah. Direct result of shenanigans. Yeah. And that's, um, that's like a vacation for you, right? I love it. 
<laughs> I love it. Why do you love it? Because they give you free drugs. <laughs> no, I'm you... just kidding. No, like, getting clean is actually pretty good, like, the first, like, month or two, but then, like, stuff doesn't start coming fast enough, you know? You don't really get the job. You don't really get the steady income coming immediately after you get clean, and it's becomes a deplorable circumstance shortly after you actually get clean. You know, like, it's so much easier to just run around, you know, and, like, get money and get high, like that's it. Joe asked me if I would be willing to help him get to the Dr. Phil show. There's not even one moment that he didn't cry about needing alcohol. I've literally been hammered drunk for 3,000 miles. We have viewers that are watching on Twitter, and I don't know about the audience here, but like uh, Fifi Flea says, uh, Dr. Phil, when do we get to the part when you chop this jerk down to size? So many women he's used would love, love to see it. <laughs> Sandra D. Hicks says, I hope every woman in New York City sees this and you never sleep on a comfy bed and use another woman again. And Tessa Curley says, you're young now, dude. Ten years in this lifestyle, no woman will acknowledge your presence. Wow. What, what are you going to do when you start getting older? Good point. Hopefully, Dr. Fell, I'm not going to be in the situation when I'm older and won't have to worry about that. Yeah. Joe's oldest friend, Pedro, offered to drive Joe all the way to Los Angeles and put up with Joe in a car for 44 hours straight because he says Joe's a good guy. Who needs help? Take a look. Joe definitely has a drinking problem. Being around Joe is not easy. Like, I do whatever the I want. Like, I honestly do not give a about anything. If he's not drunk, he's not happy. Well, I let Joe move in with me, my grandmother. So one night, Joe got home from work. My grandma found a mountain of cocaine. I didn't let him live in my house after that. Joe asked me if I would be willing to help him get to the Dr. Phil show. I volunteered to drive him across country, and there's not even one moment that he didn't cry about was needing alcohol. I just want to say, I've literally been hammered drunk for 3,000 miles. I really hope that Dr. Phil can help my friend, because he's not going to get a chance like this again, that's for sure. You've got a good friend in Pedro. This is Pedro right here. He's an excellent Pedro. friend. And he, he actually, you actually let him come spend Christmas with you because you didn't want him to be alone on Christmas, right? No, I was in jail on Christmas, Thanksgiving one time. Was it Thanksgiving? Yeah, and the year before that was Christmas. Uh-huh. And um, you hit all the alcohol. He found it. <laughs> <laughs> in the middle of the night, he drove, he, we, everybody went to bed, and he woke up in the middle of the night, and there was a brand new bottle of Southern Comfort. And in the morning, that was gone. Yeah. He said he was thirsty. Well, let me tell you what I'm processing while we're sitting here talking, okay? Um, and I don't mean to raid on your freedoms, just another word for nothing left to lose parade, but it looks to me like you have a really difficult and depressing existence. Only in the morning. Yeah. Now, because there's something you don't know. I've been homeless. I was just like 15, and it was in Kansas City, not New York City. But you can tell all of these people that it's a fun, cavalier lifestyle. Oh, it sucks in the morning. But I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it just sucks in the morning. I think it sucks in the afternoon, the evening, and at night, and it's dangerous. And the only reason you don't know that is because you're hammered most of the time, right? Predominantly. You've said you've done, you know, ecstasy, marijuana, abuse alcohol, cocaine. I mean, you'll do about anything, right? Yeah, as long as it's good quality. What are you hiding from? What are you running from? Reality. You're .05 now. And you've got tremors. If you didn't drink anything for the next 24 hours, you would go into withdrawal. Would you agree? Absolutely. I was in withdrawal when I woke up this morning. <laughs> yeah. Which means you've gotten to a level where alcohol alone 
uh, and I, who knows what other drugs you're mixing it with, whatever you have the opportunity to do at a given time, that means this is toxic enough that you go into serious bad withdrawal if you don't have it, which is not the beginning, but pretty well on the decline. You're going to age super fast. You're going to get in situations where you don't have it. You can go into delirium tremens. You can have all kinds of problems with this. At some point, this is going to come to a bad end. You're going to be dead soon if you don't do something about it. And, I, you know, you say you're running from reality. I mean, you feel like you've disappointed your family, right? Definitely. You don't think they would even entertain re-engaging with you? Zero percent chance that would ever happen. They're just done. Completely. And you got one friend here that drove you 6,000 mile round trip. Why do you suppose he did that? Because he knows I'm actually very intelligent and can do whatever I want as long as I got clean. But That's you've been clean four is. times and you blew it. Yeah. Are you asking me a question? Do you want me to ask you a question? You can ask me as many questions as you want. Just don't stare at me anymore. <laughs> Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is that covering for his out-of-control? What do you hate most about yourself? What do I hate most about myself? Yeah. Um, I don't really hate anything about myself for the most part. Not even a little bit. How about your choices? Oh, I despise my decision making. Well, what is that? Lie. Bad decision making, which leads out to the whole rest of your life, right? Yeah. What do you think about that? Because I know people don't talk to you about that because you're like an internet sensation and all of this is kind of everybody going, wow, you know, this guy's charming, he's handsome, he's this, he's that. But I don't see that because I've got a son your age, and if my son was in your circumstance at this age, I would consider it the greatest crisis of my life if my son was where you are right now. Are you asking me a question? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Do you want me to ask you a question? You can ask me as many questions as you want. Just don't stare at me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Does it make you uncomfortable? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're living your life in an altered state of consciousness, which means it's just blowing by you. And, you know, I'm one of those people that believes to whom much is given, much is expected. And you've been telling me that you're smart and you're educated and you have skills and all of that. And you're doing absolutely nothing with it. You're contributing absolutely nothing to society. And I don't think we ought to have to drag you. I think you ought to decide that you've been given some great gifts, some great skills, and you need to figure out what the hell you're hiding from so badly that you stay drunk, intoxicated, or high on drugs. You, you say, in fact, you said you're drunk 100% of the time. Yeah, unless I'm sleeping. Well, you're, you can be sleeping and drunk. Yeah, but it's not as enjoyable as being awake and drunk. <laughs> yeah. But you wake up shaking, right? Yeah. you got to have something as soon I as I vibrate in the morning. I'm still kind of shaking right now. And yeah. What's that tell you? Does that tell you that that's not good? That tells me my body hates me at the moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have any motivation or desire to get better? Oh, absolutely. Because my life is a catastrophe, dude. Yeah, I, I agree. And I, I'm, I'm willing to help you, actually. But I, it comes with a whole different set of um, expectations. I, I know you've been to rehab before, and they treated you for your addiction. But there's more going on than that with you. You, you clearly are an alcoholic and an addict, 
but you clearly have some mental and emotional issues as well. And unless and until those are resolved, you're always going to self-medicate. You're going to get out, and whatever it is that you're hiding from, whatever it is that you're running from, you're going to start medicating again and to dull that pain. Definitely know what you're saying is true. I've already overdosed either 17 or 18 times, I think. So yeah. I've literally flatlined 17 or 18 times. Yeah. And you have to be very lonely. You got a brother in L.A., right? Yeah, I don't even talk to him. Yeah, he refused to see you. He, he didn't want to see you. Correct. He, he, it was nothing to do with you. Because y you victimize everybody you're around, right? I don't like to think that victimized would be the word. I did this story for one reason. That I would hope if my son was ever in the circumstance you're in, that somebody in this world would step up and reach out a hand to him. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together we are Feeding America. If I offer to bring you resources to give you one no-kidding serious chance, to get your ducks in a row and get some traction, start moving forward in your life, would you do it? Yeah, absolutely. And understand what I'm saying is not just getting you clean, but putting you in one of the top dual diagnosis treatment centers in the country that deal with alcohol and addiction, but also deal with the emotional issues that you're self-medicating yourself to avoid. They deal, it's a dual diagnosis. They, they deal with the addiction, but they deal with the mental and emotional issues at the same time. And that means it's heavy lifting, it's hard work. But you might, just might, have an opportunity to meet yourself for the first time in a long, long time if you do that. This is Ben Levinson right here. Ben? Say hello. Hello, hey Joe. He's the founder and chairman of the Origins Recovery Centers, and it's a nationally accredited leader in dual diagnosis treatment. And they're located on South Padre Island in Texas. And they do all kinds of comprehensive programs, but they integrate addiction and trauma and other complex psychological issues. I mean, they're just all kind of comes together and unless you do that you're never going to get because you 10 years in fact I think if your story gets much worse somebody else is going to be telling it for you um, and it's it's time to step in and get honest and get clear take the time that you need and do the hard work that Dr. Phil's talking about you know I, don't, I they brought me this story to do and I said you know not really interested they said well will you read it so I read everything and I did this story for one reason that I would hope if my son was ever in the circumstance you're in that somebody in this world would step up and reach out a hand to him and and in that I would hope that for my own sons I'm doing that for you now because I think if you'll get yourself clean, detoxed, and actually figure out what's going on, I, I think the world can look a whole lot different to you than it has ever looked when you've come out of rehabilitation before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and I think you could get excited about your life and really get a handle on things. I, I believe you have the ability to do that. I do. I think you're smart enough to do it. And so I'm making you that offer right here right now and I don't know how long you'll be involved in this it could be a month three months a year two years I don't know because the idea is to work until you truly have a chance to turn your life around you willing to take that plunge yeah I'm willing to take that plunge do you? seriously let's do it okay, All right. okay. Ben, you got your work cut out for you here. We do indeed. All right. We'll be right back.
today. And a special thank you to Origins Recovery Center and Ben Levinson, the founder and chairman of Origins. I'd also like to thank Elite Daily for providing us the video of Joe's life in New York City. Thanks for being here. So long. So you're off to Florida. Oh, this is your big night. So excited at midnight. HSN is all about my new fragrance, Georgia. You're taking it over, right? Yeah, and I love it that they're going to be donating stock, domestic violence with every purchase. It's mm -hmm. very rare. It doesn't happen often. So I'm thrilled for that. Very proud. I'm very Thank proud you. of you. Have a safe. Thank you.